Jen, I bet you missed this uh, on Monday. Do you know our 13-year war with Afghanistan came to a formal end? That's right, America and NATO, we handed over command. I know you feel great about that, but you don't feel good about this. America has suffered 2,354 military casualties since 2001 in Afghanistan, including one this month bringing the year total to 53. And yet the Taliban, they're still thriving. Opium production is at an all-time high. Oh, and military command still can't get their act together. I'm sure you saw this latest report. Somehow $420 million worth of weapons gone missing from U.S. Army bases in Afghanistan. All of this has created a serious morale problem for our men and women that should never, ever be questioned because, well, they should never question that America has their back and they should never have a morale problem. But I want you to take a look at the rapidly increasing dissatisfaction among our troops. You see the different areas there from quality of life, pay, health care, and senior leadership down to 27%. All right, Jesse Jang, explain to our, our audience the arc of your 20-year career, um, you know, how we came to this point. It's so unfortunate because you can and you can walk away from a war, but it doesn't make it over. The enemy has a vote, and essentially, the military doesn't feel that this administration has supported them, their mission, what they've accomplished. I hope the president is listening. The military does not trust this administration. That is a no no brainer. They only have a one percent pay increase for the last year, next year, all the way to 2016. That's less than the cost of living. They're going after their housing allowances and they're going to give them less money for housing, which means you're paying more out of pocket. They're increasing their medical costs. So essentially, we're trying to balance a $17 trillion debt on the backs of the military. Now, I'm a conservative. I don't want excess spending in the government, but you cannot do it on the very people that keep this country free. And when they look at these military families as a burden to the debt and deficit, they have their priorities mixed up. We just talked about uh, bills passing. They're supporting land and various other airways, but we're not supporting the military. We have a 20% of the post 9 11 veterans are women. And guess what? They have 11.2% unemployment rate. How on earth can anybody get off of active duty and trust that there will be something there for them when they get out of the service? And, and the bigger question is who's going to go into active duty in the future? If you look at these numbers and military families that pass down are people that are considering going to military and they see how they're treated by their government. That, that enrollment's going to have to drop, I assume. I know yeah, it's been dropping. We talked about no it already. Trust. I mean, so there were some other uh, categories on that, too. I mean, from equipment, quality of equipment, everything. I cannot believe it. That was from 2009 and 2014, a precipitous drop, to your point, uh, in confidence. So, Scotty, you spent a lot of time with military families. What can be done to sort of help bridge this? When you get out of, out of the military to get sort of on the economic ladder, is there anything that can be done either on the private side or government side? Here's what we need to look at first of all. I think we need to look at the interview process. That sounds very simple, but the majority of veterans say that they go and they apply for a job, they get the opportunity, but then they're never asked for the second callback. And the reason is employers say that these guys have been taught to know respect, to give quick, succinct answers, and to never question authority. That's not what you want in a job interview. They want feedback. They want to know interaction. And that's something that a lot of soldiers, because they have been in the chain of command for so long, they don't know how to right, do to expand right. on their answers. I wanna, I wanna, Let's focus on the interview. I want to ask you guys about this, right, because troop strength has been gutted in part because the administration just really isn't a fan of military or of war, but also the Pentagon's infatuation with technology replacing human beings. And I listen, I guess one day we will have a robot army. But really what's interesting here is that we've got these levels like where they're where the machines are being put in place maybe a little bit too soon, Jesse. Well, I don't see how we can replace our SEALs and our Marine Recon and our soldiers and airmen with a robot. Some of the greatest technology has been produced for the military. There's no doubt about that. Our GPS systems, some of our telecommunication systems, a lot of your internet protection systems the internet are itself. Of that. Yes, it's actually been a great benefit for the economy. But when it comes to having the heart and soul to win wars, guess what? Our enemy fears the day that they're faced with a soldier or Marine carrying that M16 I, rifle. Well, I wish they feared our soldiers, Charles. I mean, we have the military might to annihilate anyone on Earth by multitudes of how many factors. What we lack, to Jesse's point, is the moral confidence. I mean, when I hear the administration saying, well, you know, ISIS is gaining ground, what, what the yeah. hell? We have enough military to, to literally make yeah, it a parking lot. Nuts. We don't have the moral fortitude. Pita, you were just out there. Quick, tell us a little bit about the morale that you saw. I was just, to Scotty's point, I think a lot of that morale, too, comes from them not supporting, our government not supporting them after they get out of the military in terms of jobs, in terms of helping them. There are companies out there like Blackstone that are out there trying to help veterans get them into the working you know sphere and into their companies but uh you know we, they just really need support uh and i think that's what really counts especially towards the end of their careers all right guys um 
You know, listen, I, my father was a career military guy. I was in the Air Force for four years, and I, I, it's amazing. It's, I never thought that, you know, upstart terror groups can overnight not be afraid of us, you know, it's because crazy. Because we walked away, yeah. and they're giving pink slips to some of these officers on the battlefield. I'm sorry, if I was on active duty right now, I'd be scared to death, and why would I invest another 10 years with that kind of risk on my plate? All right, guys, let's leave it there.